want to comment on what you've heard and what. Uh, I mean, for this, I raised the question about and I'm still sitting all the terms. I'm not going to do something because I've just seen myself in a marriage for 20 or 30 years. I know it's not going to work because it can be that or something different. So I'd rather divorce and move on with life and let a woman go away. Well, the, the, the word of God is what we are talking about, that so, if okay. there's a problem... So, again, if I do divorce, my question is, it's not of power of way to heaven? No, no, it's not. A, it's, God says you cannot, God says you cannot do that. God says if you divorce, you cannot remarry. Yes, yeah, so I say if I divorce, mm -hmm. it's not a path way to heaven. Well, God has set his rule, so uh, God's... It's not a pathway, it's a difficult question to answer. Divorce, you have to stay unmarried. Married. Yeah, that is, they are taking the path. So if yeah. I find somebody that I love, and you no. oh, Okay, okay. <laughs> we're not going to end this. <laughs> okay. So, let's go to question... Yeah, in fact, this is something I'm happy we are discussing, and it is something that we really need to, uh, you know. For everything, I got, I got a question for all the answers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so I understand we're talking about Victoria, or is that conclusive for them? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, we can tell what I think, and that's conclusive for them. But you know how, even we talk about it, I. Yes. <laughs> So the question again, uh, topic on uh, dating, marriage, and divorce. Question three. Oh, number two. Wow, we see how far we have gone. In a, all right, question two. A homosexual relationship is acceptable if the two people love each other and marry. Oh, so question one is where we had all this uh, wonderful time. Okay, so question two. Uh, what is it, true or false? False. We are agree. You know. So just for the purpose of time, uh, it's false. That's correct. Romans one twenty six to twenty eight. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the uh, the natural use into that which is against nature, and likewise also the men have a living the natural use of the woman burned in their loss one toward another, men with men, walking that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves and that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. You know, so that is... Uh, Romans 1, 26 to 28. Question 3. So false is question, uh, question 2. Question 3. Christians may date non-Christians. Why is it false? If somebody say, I love somebody, you know, I meet somebody, I love the person, why shouldn't I? Oh, the Bible. Oh. Ah, uh, Amen. Second uh, Corinthians six fourteen fifteen. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. But sometimes, don't we do that? Oh, mom, dad, I love. This is the only. I love him. I love her. And this is. Sometimes it just works out in the end. Mm -hmm. The person to get married and they get converted together. Yeah. True. But sometimes it causes more problems. Than you so it's better to be uh, careful. For, for what fellowship had righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion has light with darkness? You see, God has given us uh, this wonderful label as light. And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that, that believeth with an infidel, which is an unbeliever, or somebody who doesn't know or believe in Christ? So that's why we have to be careful, you know, Look at what Samson did. Mom, ma, I want to marry this one. This is the one I'm going to marry. Get her for me. So, uh, anyway, um, question, so that is false. Uh, question four, if you really love the person, it is, permissible, it is permissible 
to have sexual relationship with that person before marriage. 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adult adulators, nor adulterers. You can see that there's a distinction that, uh, you know, each one is being itemized. There's a separate word for each of these things, you know, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. So God has made a provision. Of course, there is forgiveness. God can forgive each, and God forgives each of these uh, comments, each of these uh, topics. But one should not make a practice of this. Once the person realizes, oh, I have sinned and asked for forgiveness, God forgives. So uh, it is false. False lie. It is uh, something that God doesn't want us to do. That's why he says we should rather marry. You know, that's why somewhere they says, you know, instead of burning, they should rather do. So question five. A Christian may marry a non-Christian. All right. Uh, this is also uh, the answer to question uh, two. Second Corinthians six fourteen to fifteen. The same thing. Be not be ye not unequally yoked together. All right. So question six. If you are thirty and your partner is forty, you may marry them, even with the age gap. True or false? Okay. All right. And this is First Corinthians seven two. Nevertheless. To avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. So it doesn't matter if the person, you know, as long as the person is not under age, you know, uh, it is uh, permissible to marry, you know, them. All right, so true, true. Question uh, seven. A Christian may choose to never marry, true or false? All right, and First Corinthians 7, 6 to 9 says, But I speak this by permission and not of commandment, for I would that all men were even as I myself. But every man hath his own gift of God, and one after this manner and another after that. I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I, which means not married. But if they cannot contain let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. Que so, true, true. Question eight. If you are in love, a Christian may marry someone of a different religion. All right. This goes to the same question, uh, the answer for question three and question five. So, Second Corinthians 6, 14, and 15. Or again, be ye not unequally yoked. Question nine. A Christian may marry a divorced Christian even if adultery wasn't the cause. True or false? <coughs> ah, we all agree. Well, uh, so Matthew 5, 31 and 32. It hath been said, whosoever shall put away his own, his wife, let him give her a right. It has been said. It is reported. It is, it is something that is referring to the past. A, a writing of divorcement. But I say, which means Christ saying, I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away or divorce his wife in saving for the cause of fornication, all right, cause her to commit adultery. So we can see those two interchangeable words uh, there. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, hmm? committed adultery. So, false. Question 10. A separated Christian may date other Christians while they wait for the final divorce papers. True or false? Uh, the same answer to question, to answer, uh, question 9. Answer. Uh, Matthew 5, 31, 32. It's also uh, false. Question 11. Christian women should submit to and respect their own husbands. True, false? 
Two. All right. Uh, amen. Uh, Ephesians 5, 22 to 24. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. It is not because of the husband. It is because of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the whole purpose. And if this is not being done, we just have to ask God to help us so that we will be able to do that. So uh, that is what the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Hmm. Sometimes the scriptures, they add some words there that uh, it's, you, you, you can't get yourself out. It says in everything. So, um, all right, true truth. Question 13. When you are married, you may keep spending time alone with people you formerly dated. Oh, I jumped. Uh, <laughs> pardon me. <laughs> All right, question 12. Christian men are required to love their wives as Christ loves the church. True or false? 100% true truth. <laughs> if you just... <laughs> Thank you for calling me to order. Uh, Matthew 5, 25 to 29. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to, her, to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. That's emphasis there, that you, know, you love your wife as your own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself, for no man ever yet hated his own flesh. You know, we all love our, uh, you know, our bodies, our flesh, that we're always taking pictures, always taking pictures. I take pictures left and right. So uh, that's uh, true truth. But nourishes and cherishes it even as the Lord, the church. So uh, true truth. Now to question 13. When you are married, you may keep spending time alone with people you formerly dated. True or false? And First uh, Thessalonians 5, 21 and 22 says, Prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil or any appearance of sin. You know, that's why we have to cut the relationship. That's why in uh, Genesis 2, God is saying that, you know, once you are married, you leave. You, you pack all your belongings. You pack all your things and say, you know, I am now packed. And you don't communicate. You don't talk. If there's a communication, again, I think I have to bring this in. Uh, we have to let. You can't just say, oh, uh, my wife, I'm going to visit my uh, girlfriend, you know, in another town. And I may be back in a week or something like that or no, you have to, that must not be done. If you are going to visit for one reason or the other, you have to go along with your wife. Your husband and wife go, and wife and husband should go, and if there is any communication, it must be done together. You can't be having a secret or any other conversation with somebody else's, uh, or your old, you know, uh, it's, it must not be. There has to be cut, you have to cut off. And if they, are, if they continue the relationship, you know, for one reason or the other, for scriptural reasons, you must always let your spouse know that this is what you are doing, and the spouse must agree. The spouse says, uh, no, cut it off. It means, final. if the wife, husband, all agree, then that is uh, something, but not uh, in this case. So the answer here is that, uh, you know, false. All right. Question, and that's First Thessalonians 5, 21, 22. Question 14. It is a sin to desire someone other than your spouse when you are married. True? 
All right, Matthew 5, 27, 28 says, Ye have heard that it was said by them of old, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So God makes it even more difficult that that's why you shouldn't. You shouldn't uh, even think about that. And one uh, suggestion, I think we had this Bible study uh, somewhere, and, uh, you know, and the comment that I gave was that... Uh, Sometimes people find it difficult to do that, and they say, oh, well, I can't help it. And I say, well, this is uh, the suggestion that I offered, that think about it this way. You have this evil intention in you, and you can't help it. Now, consider this. Instead of continuing in that evil, uh, you know, evil uh, you know, thing in your heart, and look at that person as your wife, your husband, I mean, your wife, your daughter, your sister, that somebody else is doing that too, would you be happy? You have to say, no, 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 I won't. So think of it that, you know, this, this person, if you are having that thought, and then consider that somebody else is doing that to you, to your wife, to your husband, to your, uh, you know, your daughter, your sister, and that stops. That, that, so always think about that that you don't want such a thing, and so you are not going to even uh, have that in your mind because you look at the person and sort of immediately, you know, reverse the person and say that, no, you are not going to do that. So, um, all right, so it is a sin to desire someone. Uh, uh, first, Matthew five twenty-seven to 28, that we shouldn't do that. So that is uh, true, true, right? Question 15, is that way? On, uh? yes. Okay, 15 says, It is not a sin to desire someone else when you are not married, true or false. 